You're tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is our first Power Rankings Tuesday of the 2023 NFL season. Hard to believe we're here. Presented, of course, by DraftKings. To say I'm excited that we have our first game two nights from tonight is an understatement. I This is one of the toughest Power Rankings of the year going into the year. Although I did do my predictions a month or two ago that you guys can all go back and check. And so my power rankings, for the most part, are going to follow with those predictions. I do need to give a shout-out to Billy Ray. He is our latest patron, patreon.com slash RT Media. Absolutely love when we get new members of the family like Billy Ray. Other than that, Jack, listen, we're not messing around, man. We're talking about every team, every Tuesday, It's not really Big Show time, because from now on, we'll be talking about the game the night before for Big Show, although I can tell you it was pretty impressive the way Duke beat down Clemson last night, but it's Power Rankings time. It's time for the all-important Power Rankings. The worst team in the history of the NFL is... All right, Ross, kicking it off, 32nd team is the Arizona Cardinals. I don't even think Cardinals fans are mad about this. I think Cardinals fans almost acknowledge this. Now, remember, if you're new to the show, welcome. I think you're going to like it. We are daily, Monday through Friday. There's also even Money Betting Podcast, which we'll do today. The College Draft Podcast, which is college football and betting. NFL Prospects, which we record on Mondays. Fantasy Feast, Wednesday and Thursday. But um, every week when I do these power rankings, it is based upon where who I think would win a head-to-head matchup of these teams right now in a series of, I don't know, three games, five games, seven games at a neutral location, right? And right now, I think the Cardinals would be the worst team in the NFL. 31st is the Indianapolis Colts. Not really feeling the Colts right now either, especially without Jonathan Taylor. I mean, no Jonathan Taylor, your best offensive player. And we'll see how that sorts out. And then, I don't know about the defense. And then you got a rookie quarterback who's very raw. Just a lot of, uh, a lot of negatives for the Colts right now. Now, I do think that they're the type of team that can be better as the season goes on, but right now, they're going to start pretty close to the bottom. 30th is the L.A. Rams. It's, um, it feels like they're in a really weird spot. It feels like they should be rebuilding, but they have some of the best players in the NFL. Aaron Donald... Cooper Cup, although especially, especially with Cooper Cup out right now, I'm going to have the Rams at 30 because I don't think he's going to play the next couple weeks. I I don't think we're going to see Cooper Cup for a while, and that is not good when you look at the Rams roster. Come at 29th is the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, getting the Josh Jacobs deal done was big. They might end up being a little bit better than this. I could have had them 25, 26. But something just doesn't feel right with the Raiders to me right now. It just, it does not feel right. Um, I can see them moving up ahead of these next few teams. But I don't think they're going to have a very good season. I I think they're headed for probably five or six wins again. 28th is the Houston Texans. I think they're doing this the right way. 
with C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson, building up the O-line. You know, I think the Texans are headed in the right direction, finally. But I don't think it's going to be a great year for them this year. 27th is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, we talked about this yesterday, right, Jack, in the sense that I think they should strongly, strongly consider trading Mike Evans if they're not going to extend him and get something in return for him because it feels like it's a rebuild. I mean, it feels like they need to start to really think about the next few years. I think the issue is, Jack, they think they can compete in the NFC South, and they might be right. But, man, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a good situation for them to be in. 26th is the Carolina Panthers. So I do think Carolina is on the rise. I do think they're doing a lot of positive things. But just looking at the offensive line in the preseason with a rookie quarterback, Brian Burns, isn't practicing. He wants a new deal. Just a lot of sort of uh, negative things going against the Panthers right now. And 25th is the Chicago Bears. They definitely have the potential to move up here. You know, they've done a lot of good things, building the offensive line, getting DJ Moore for Justin Fields. I can see them being a team that moves into the top 20 by the end of the year. 24th is the Washington Commanders. I mean, they have a good defense. They have pretty good skill. I just remain concerned about their offensive line, concerned about their quarterback. I hope he's good. I hope Sam Howell looks as good as he did at times in the preseason. By the way, did the game go to timeout, Jack? It's time to order on DoorDash. Wait, is it halftime? That's ordering time. Two-minute warning, you got it. That's your cue to order in. Get everything you want delivered while you root for your squad. Yes, that means burgers, fries, drinks, you name it. And if you have a Dash Pass membership, you can get the new Wendy's loaded nacho cheeseburger delivered. Yep, right now, the loaded nacho cheeseburger is exclusively available with Dash Pass at participating U.S. Wendy's for a limited time. We need DoorDash use some honey tea or something here as we move to 23 with the Denver Broncos. I'm literally chugging honey tea while we're doing the show. <laughs> Broncos will be interesting, of course, to see what they've got going with Sean Payton and Russell Wilson. I feel like they could kind of go either way. I don't know. I think they're going to end up being around 500 would be my guess. 22 is the Atlanta Falcons. Well, they won seven games the last couple years, even though they had not a whole lot of talent. Now they got Ritter with a full off season. They've added Bijan. They get Pitts back. I think they have as good a chance to win the NFC South basically as anybody. 21st is the Green Bay Packers. They're another one that I think could end up surprising and end up being in the top 20. You know, it's really primarily about Jordan Love, and I don't know that any of us really know how well he's going to be able to play. 20th is the New England Patriots. They're one I kind of feel like we do know about. You know, I mean, they're going to win between seven and nine games. Like, I feel like I would bet a lot of money, Jack, that the Patriots win between seven and nine. I'd be surprised if it's less than seven, and I'd be very surprised if they got to ten, especially in that division. 
19th is the Tennessee Titans. Titans are one of the more interesting teams as well. Looking forward to calling their game on Sunday. Titans at the Saints. That'll be my first game for CBS. Should be a lot of fun. But for the Titans, you know, they were right there. I mean, they were, what, 7-3 and three last year until they lost their last seven games. Tannehill was so banged up, missed a bunch of games. It's all about the O-line down there in Tennessee. 18th is the New Orleans Saints. I think they're the favorites in the NFC South. I think Derek Carr, getting him is significant. I mean, I think Derek Carr is a top 15 quarterback, and they clearly did not get top 15 quarterback play last year. 17th is the New York Giants. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I think the Giants are better than they were last year or not. I kind of feel like they're about the same. I think they're kind of eight wins, nine wins maybe. About the same as they were last year. I like the Waller edition, but it also feels like they won a lot of close games. Like, more than their fair share. We hit the halfway mark, 16th, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I've talked about it before, but the big concern there is just their offensive line, especially early in the season. you got to really hope, I mean really hope, that they don't get anybody injured up front because they're already very thin as it is. And, man, with the way their tackles are right now, Jack, you're almost worried about, you're almost worried about Trevor Lawrence getting rocked early in this season. 15th is the Minnesota Vikings. So I think like a lot of people, I kind of expect them to take a step back. But, you know, they're not going to win 13 games again. They're not going to win every close game again. But they still have a bunch of good players. And to me, they're still a good team. So I still think they're better than these teams below them. But maybe I'm wrong, and maybe that will be proven to be the case. I'm never wrong about drinking Labatt Blue Light. Because if you want to take anything to the next level, how about Thursday night's game? Chiefs, Lions. Drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends. Live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. I made my days wrong. I said we didn't get a Minnesota Vikings. Isn't that on Tuesdays? Or am I too rusty from in-season? No, you're right. I am rusty. And, dude, I am just trying to get through this show. I, I have a little bit uh, of a... Uh, last night, my throat was a little sore, and my nose was a little stuffed. And I woke up this morning, and I have, like, a frog in my throat, which is just not cool. I am fighting... Like, just so you know, I am chugging water... While I have a fisherman's friend's cough drop in, chugging tea with honey, and, and if you hear me spraying stuff, I'm spraying throat code. <laughs> well, at least nobody can blame you for not trying. <laughs> I mean, dude, this is the clip you need to cut. That's not banaka. That's not for better breath. That's to coat my throat. Oh, man. You know what? I'm tough, though. We'll get through this. I'm a podcaster, gosh darn it. (laughs) 14th is the Cleveland Browns. So I think they're going to be better than other people do. Um, Listen, if they're not, they're going to clean house there. But they got better on the D-line. Deshaun Watson has to be better than he was the end of the year last year. I think that bodes well for the Browns. 13th is the Baltimore Ravens. They're a good team. You know, I I think both Greg Cosell and I have expressed our skepticism a little bit about, you know, this new offense under Todd Munkin and just how well that'll go with Lamar Jackson. I'm skeptical. I I am. And, And maybe it ends up being perfect. Maybe it ends up being awesome. And if it is, they're definitely a top 10 team. 
But right now, I'm skeptical. And I don't know, Jack, whether or not you're speaking my language, which right now is not real good, whatever language I'm trying to speak. But the best way to learn a language is immersion. Like living where the language is spoken, natively, using it every day. But obviously, that's not possible for everybody. The second best way, Babel. Because with Babel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Listen, science says our ability to learn new languages peaks when we're children. So if you can't be six years old again, we got the next best thing, Babel. Absolutely awesome. My daughters and I and my wife used it before we went to Ecuador. Highly recommend it. Here is a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash Ross. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash Ross, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Ross. Rules and restrictions may apply. Coming in at 12th is the L.A. Chargers. Feeling pretty good about them. You know, I like Kellen Moore as the OC. I think they have a top 10, maybe top 5 offensive line. Can't remember the last time you said that about the Chargers. It's very impressive. And I think the defense will be pretty good. Certainly better than they were last year. So, I know we say this all the time, but I'm the one saying it now. Finally feels like the Chargers have finally sort of arrived. But we'll see. Coming in at 11th is the Detroit Lions. Well, I'm a believer. You know, there's a lot of hype there. We'll see what happens Thursday night. But I think they're the best team in that division. I think they're going to the playoffs. And frankly, I think they have a really good chance to win that, to win a playoff game for the first time in over 30 years, which is just insane. We'll finally enter the top 10, with 10th being the Miami Dolphins. You know, Jack, you could help me out and do some of the things I normally do that I can't do. Does one of, do you have the guts to do it? Let me hear it. My, I feel it's like Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, and then you make up some. I'm not witty enough to make up a line about the Dolphins this week. I'm unprepared. You threw me on the spot. Miami but. Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number 10 to start this year. Man, I still can't get over Greg, the way he was talking about Mike McDaniel and that offense. I mean, I was about to ask Greg if he wanted to get a room, if he needed a room. <laughs> I mean, Greg loves the Dolphins offense, dude. <laughs> we'll go number nine with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Probably higher than other people have them, but they won nine games last year. I think they're better on both sides of the ball. Pickett looked awesome in the preseason. And I think um, <clears throat> I think they got a darn good team. I really do. I think I think that the Steelers are going back to the playoffs. Number eight is the Seattle Seahawks. So we got a new thing for Power Rankings Tuesdays, Jack. It's gonna be the team I'm riding with, the team I'm really feeling good about, right? It's brought to you by Wrangler, made for the ride of life. Save 15% on your first Wrangler.com order with promo code ROSS15. So the team I'm riding with going into the season, the Seattle Seahawks. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in what they did last year. I thought they might be one of the worst teams in the league last year. They go and make the playoffs. I think Geno Smith really is that good. They had two top 20 picks in Witherspoon, Smith, and Jigba. They add 
Draymond Jones on the D-line, Bobby Wagner at linebacker. I think the Seahawks have a chance to win that division. I think the Seahawks have a chance to go a long way in the playoffs in the NFC. The Seahawks are the team I'm riding with heading into week one. At seven, we have the New York Jets. Well, their defense is loaded. Rodgers looks like he's on a mission. I think it's going to be a big year for the Jets. Six, we got the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> yeah, I guess a little bit lower than I've had them recently, right? Why are you laughing, Jack? Because as I said, you're just as I said, there's just three seconds of dead air where you could just hear the spritz you were talking about earlier. <laughs> it's called. Um, well, I'm not going to tell you what it's called. Unless they, unless they want to do a sponsor deal, I'm not telling you what they're called. No more freebies. Um, but, yeah, it's like it helps to coat your throat. Man, this is so not fun. It's so not fun. But I love you guys. And you need your power rankings Tuesday. Hopefully I'm better for even money today. People will riot. Uh, the bill's not as high as I've had them in, in recent years. I just... I'm not sure they really got better this offseason. You'd have to point out to me how they got better. And right now, without Vaughn Miller, they're not a top-five team. Well, the San Francisco 49ers are a top-five team coming in at fifth. Yeah, the only real question there is, curious about right tackle, curious about Nick Bosa. And I still think everybody wants to see a little bit more, for sure, from Brock Purdy. At fourth is the Dallas Cowboys. I think they're very good. Honestly, the, my main question mark with them is just Mike McCarthy as the play caller. I think that they are a very, very good team. Well, Mike McCarthy is the play caller and the depth. I don't think they have great depth. If they get some injuries, they're, they're in more trouble than most. Third is the top team in the NFC with the Philadelphia Eagles. So, yeah, I mean, I think the Cowboys, Niners, Eagles all bunched together. I think the Eagles obviously are very good. You know, we're just going to see. They lost seven starters. Seven. Five up the middle on the defensive side of the ball. That's a lot. That's a lot. We're about to find out just how much of an impact that makes. Who is the Cincinnati Bengals? So the Bengals, I'm a big fan. I, I'm a big fan of Burrow. I'm a big fan of their team. I think they're going to be really, really good this year. Um, you know, I think adding Orlando Brown was big. They did lose some guys on defense, but I like who they replaced him with. Obviously, Burrow's health is really, really important, but... I think he'll play this week. I think he'll be fine. I think the Bengals have a great chance to win the Super Bowl. Ross's number one team, which is totally meaningless, but it's fun and will get many of you incredibly annoyed, is... And the number one team in this week's power rankings are the reigning champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, I don't think many people would argue with this, right? I mean, the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes, they have Travis Kelsey, they have Andy Reid. I guess the real big question mark right now is Chris Jones and how long he'll be out. I guess it doesn't look like he's going to play Thursday night. And without Chris Jones, I probably should have them a couple spots lower now that I think about it because Chris Jones is a difference-making player. I mean, they're probably third – I would say, without him, maybe fourth, but third, for sure in my mind, behind the Bengals and the Eagles without Chris Jones. And remember, I go based on what the team has right now. I go based on who's playing right now if they played each other right now. So I guess actually, right now, I think the Bengals are the best team. I think I am going to stop talking for a couple hours I think we're done here. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network on Samsung TV+, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shoutouts. How about... Need to give shoutouts for Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, HumanHeadNYC.com, SteakhouseSports.com, Go-Bangles.com, BackOfficeSchedule.com, and MyFrontPageStory.com.